CBS News security analyst and former assistant director of the FBI, Ron Hosko, joins me now. Ron, thanks for being with us. Based sure. on the interviews that these officers gave to our Bill Whitaker of 60 Minutes, what clues might be gleaned? Stephanie, lots of clues. Uh, the discussion about uh, electronic devices, whether it's a laptop or an iPad or a computer or a phone, uh, the FBI is going to be supporting local law enforcement in exploiting every one of those um, electronic document or electronic devices in looking for uh, internet searches, um, communications between the killer and others, trying to uh, you know put together the pieces of his life over the recent uh, days, weeks, months looking for any connection to anyone else that might have helped in any conceivable way, uh, certainly the communications over the last few hours to see was there anybody who helped haul a suitcase into the room, mm -hmm. who helped uh, bring him ammunition, who helped him rent uh, another hotel room or, or you know, uh, surveil any other potential target locations. All of that to include uh, when you're talking about exploiting a cell phone, you're, you're going to be going to the, the uh, service provider to get tower information to see see if you can track his movements mm -hmm. from tower to tower around Los Angeles or uh, I'm sorry Las Vegas, Mesquite, any other location that he might have been to to try to put that together in a composite picture and understand movements, contacts, thinking, despite the fact that you know quite clearly he had taken his own life so he's not available to tell what he was thinking about they're going to try to reconstruct every bit of that through the electronic devices it has been a week since the shooting in vegas ron are you surprised that we don't know more and that more of a picture has not emerged of the motive you know, I, I'm not too, too surprised. Uh, you know, I think that uh, because of the nature of these active shooter incidents over time, we become accustomed to having a clear understanding very quickly. Uh, certainly the FBI uh, drops these investigations into two buckets very quickly. It's either terrorism or it's not. And, and there are indicia that suggest terrorism. There might be uh, contact with foreign actors, ISIS uh, recruiters and the like. And, and you get that picture from you know, internet, po social media postings, mm -hmm. internet searches and whatnot. And so we, we become accustomed to the quick identification of what, what was the reason uh, based on terrorism, criminal or, or quite clearly mental illness, which is so prevalent. Um, but people are complex and, and mm -hmm. this person seems to have uh, intentionally isolated himself. He, you know, feels very much like a loner, was not sharing all these feelings like some people do, not posting them up, not leaving a note or a manifesto. But I think that's, that's uh, human nature, that, that we are complex beings. This is someone who is much more complex than some others. We were hearing uh, some hints at po potential mental illness, at the anxiety or depression. Mm -hmm. So I think some of those things take a, take a period of time to come together, particularly if his intent was to not give off clues, and that seems to have been part of his intent. Of course, <clears throat> our instinct is just to want to know as journalists, as the American public, as people that <clears throat> want to learn how to prevent tragedies like this from happening. Um, as more time passes, does it become more difficult for the FBI to ascertain the motive? No, I don't think so. I, I actually think the opposite. Because of the their uh, capability in exploiting the digital media, uh, phones, and making those connections, every new phone that they open up will presumably give them phone numbers or internet searches uh, that they hadn't had before. And that's all going to generate additional leads, additional people to contact, interviews. Um, we, we've heard uh, just in the last day or two this discussion about that he may have been taking some prescription medication, he had anxiety. So one doctor may lead to another doctor. Certainly they're going to be looking into his prior health care and, and uh, emotional history. And, and so they, that may be an entirely separate path for them to, to track down uh, prior prescriptions, the doctors who prescribed, anybody else he might have gotten medication from. And, and so I think uh, the additional time is going to be beneficial for law enforcement, not uh, yield less and less. It'll yield more and more.
Ron Hosko, thanks so much as always. My pleasure.